Praise the Lord. Beloved, God bless you for listening to me at this time. I want to share the word of God with you. My name is Rosalind. I want to share the word of God with you in the book of Esther, chapter 1. The book of Esther, chapter 1. Bible says that there was a king called Zerzes, and this king had a banquet for 180 days. And then after the 180 days, he had another party or another banquet which lasted for seven days. And on the seventh day, he called for the queen of the land, and his name, her name was Vashti. Vashti was very beautiful. And as a queen of the land, the Bible says Zerzes wanted to show her beauty to all the nobles and the guests in his party or at the banquet room. And so he gave orders that Vashti should be brought. But at that same time, or on that same day, that the king had his party, Bible says that Vashti had also made, made uh, her own party and had invited the women of the land to also come and dine with her. And so therefore, when the king's command was given to her to present herself, to come and show her beauty, to the, the guest that Zerzes had invited, Vashti refused to come. This made the king very, very angry. The Bible said that he was very furious with her. And the advices of the land advised King Zerzes to remove Vashti from her royal position and give it to a better woman or another person who deserves to be the queen of the land because they claim that if that is not done then all the women in that land will go to, they are going to follow suit they are going to behave the same manner as Vati did and therefore they will disrespect their husbands in their homes and so a decree was made which can never be repealed that Vashti was no longer the queen in the land beloved what I want to talk to you about is the spirit of pride arrogance disobedience which started in heaven with the angel called Lucifer when he made up his mind to ascend to the throne of God. That was pride that entered into him. And because pride entered into him, he allowed himself for pride to enter into him. Bible says in the book of Isaiah, he was cast down with all his cohorts, with all the angels who he was able to persuade to also disobey God and fought in heaven. But he was defeated and was cast down. In the same manner in these latter days, the devil is using this spirit of pride, arrogance, disobedience, the same thing that entered into Vashti and refused to obey the command of her husband and the king of the land. Now when Vashti did that, they did not spare her. They removed her from her royal position. An announcement was made in search for another person better than Vashti. What am I trying to tell you at this time? As a child of God, we've been privileged enough to be called children of God. The time that we accept the Lord Jesus as our personal Savior. Now, as I read, when I was reading through this chapter, what the Holy Spirit laid on my heart that I want to share with you, he compared this passage to another passage in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, 
Bible says that Jesus uh, spoke in parables. And there was a parable of the king who had a banquet. And then when the banquet was ready, he asked his servant to go and call out the invited guests to this banquet. But as they went to call them, they refused to come. And they beat the servants mercilessly. They killed some of them and sent some back to the king wounded. These actions made the king so angry, he sent for his army to go and destroy all these invited guests who had uh, killed his servants. And so they were destroyed. Bible says that then he sent another servant. He said, the banquet is ready, but the people that I prepared this banquet for did not deserve it. And so go into the street to every corner and invite every living creature, every person that would like to be part of this banquet. Invite them and put them, put on them a royal robe. And as they did that, they invited people who were not supposed to be in the party, but they put a royal robe on them into the banquet. Now the king saw somebody who was now wearing the royal apparel, and then he asked him, friend, where are you coming from, and why are you here? Were you invited if you were? Why are you not wearing the wedding apparel? And so he said, take him and throw him into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so it says that many are called, but few are chosen. Beloved in the Lord, the Lord Jesus has made a banquet for you and I. He has shed his blood on the cross, and that was the invitation, so that the gap between you, the, the gap between mankind and God will be patched up or will be closed. And when he left, he said that he was going to prepare a place, a better place for us in heaven. And when he's done, he is going to come back and take his own holy people back to heaven with him. The Lord has laid a banquet in front of us by inviting us into his kingdom to be his children. When you read the book of John, chapter 1, going, he says that he came unto his own, but his own did not receive him. But to those who received him, those who believed in his name, he gave them the power to be children of God. As children of God, or as people, the Lord has called us to his eternal glory. The Lord has called us, and he expects us to come willingly, without him forcing us. And as we do that, he said that the place that he is preparing for us, even now we know that the place is already, the place is ready, but we, the human beings on this earth, are not. We are filled with pride. We are filled with arrogance. We are filled with evil things which we allow the devil to put in us. Behold, he stands at the door and knock. If anyone hears his voice and opens the door, the Bible says that he will come into him and dine with that person. So the Lord Jesus has extended his loving, kind heart and heart to you. If you don't know Jesus, today is the day. Tomorrow is no promise for you. Leave or set aside every spirit of pride. Set aside every spirit of arrogance and come to the Lord Jesus. Because those the banquet was prepared for did not deserve it. They rejected Jesus when he came into They even call him that he is the prince of Bel the Beelzebub was operating through him. But to the Gentiles, to us who received him, he has given us the power and authority to be children of God. It is very sad that in these latter days, 
the spirit of vastity is at work, manipulating a lot of men of God. When the gift of God comes on them, and they are able to heal the sick, they are, they are able to speak the word, and good things happen. Instead of they giving glory to God, then they put their hands on their chest and begin to speak as if their power was from their own self. The Lord Jesus is talking to you as a child of God. If you believe whatever power you have in you is from the Lord Jesus and authentic, then all glory, honor, and adoration must be given to Jesus, the name Jesus. If you allow the spirit of pride, the one that entered into vastity and she refused the king's command just to come and appear before the king, that wasn't hard to do. The Lord is not asking any hard things from us. The Lord Jesus is not asking us to do any hard work. Beloved, he has already done the hard work. Yours is to accept the invitation. Yours is to allow him into your heart. It does not matter what you have done, whether you have killed somebody, whether you have gossiped, whether you are practicing witchcraft, whatever you are doing. Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28, says, Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, My burden and my yoke is easy and light. The Lord Jesus has extended his hands to you. Which part are you on? Do not let the spirit of pride enter into you. Beloved, Vashti lost her position, her royal position as the queen of the land, all because of pride, all because of arrogance, all because of disobedience. If we disobey the voice of God talking to us today, we will find ourselves in the lake of fire, the hell fire that, the, that the, uh, God has prepared for the devil and his cohort. Hell wasn't made for mankind. Don't harden your heart as the word of God is coming to you. Please give your life to Jesus. He has prepared the place already. He's looking up to you to accept him, to make him the Lord of your life. He's calling unto you. Are you ready? It does not matter the sins that you have committed. He's ready to forgive you. That is why he died on the cross for you. Beloved, he died so that you might live. Don't let this invitation pass you by today as you listen to me. Jesus is calling unto you. Jesus loves you. He loves you more than anything in this world. Don't let the devil fool you, brothers and sisters. Don't let the enemy deceive you into believing he can give you power. Whatever power the devil gives you is fake. It has expiration date. Jesus is coming for a holy people. And the invitation is now. Now is the grace period. When the rapture comes, grace will be no more. Grace is not a license to continue to sin. If there is the spirit of pride in you, let it go and let God take control. Let the Holy Spirit take your will and let his will be done in your life. If you are ready to accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, you say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, today I confess my sins. I have Regretted everything that I have done. Come into my heart. Wash me. Cleanse me in your blood. And make me whole. Today, I make you the Lord. My Lord and my personal Savior. Save my soul. And the souls of my friends and my family. Help me, Lord Jesus. Amen. Beloved, if you prayed with me, the Lord has taken his rightful seat in you. My email is midnightprayersministry at gmail.com. Midnightprayersministry at gmail.com. You can email me. I will help you.
to learn how to pray, to read your Bible, and also win souls for Jesus Christ. Jesus loves you, and Jesus is Lord, and he is coming for a holy people. God bless you. Amen.